That's right guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of buying a house right now in 2024. Let's get into it. What's up everyone? If we haven't met before, my name is Andrew Kulikowski and I am a local real estate agent and team leader of Living in Niagara Real Estate Group at EXP Realty. Now my team helps hundreds of people buy and sell real estate here in the Niagara region. And of course we absolutely love it because that is what we do. So if that person's you and you've jumped on this video and you're thinking about making a move, whether it's tomorrow or in the next two years and you wanna learn more about what it's like living in Niagara, then there's one thing you guys gotta do and that is reach out to us. You are always welcome to call, text, email, DM, or our favorite, schedule a Zoom call so we can arrange a meet and greet and see how we can help you guys. Whether it's a good time to buy a house in Canada right now depends on several factors from your personal finances to the economic situation of what's going on out there in the market as well as your long-term goals. Now in this video, we are going to start off with the cons or the disadvantages of buying a house right now in the state of the market in 2024. Now, number one, and this is probably the most obvious, are high interest rates. Now with higher rates, as we all know, it limits your affordability and reduces your purchasing power. Now there is good news on the horizon, guys. I'm sure you've all heard it before. The Bank of Canada has done two rate reductions since the beginning of the year, and they are slotted to continue to do more reductions by the end of the year. Now, one important thing to note and what's affecting Canada right now is what's going on in the United States. There's a lot of buzz and the feds are talking right now. They just had an emergency meeting that they have to reduce their interest rates. Now with inflation and job deceleration happening in the United States right now, it is a major concern. So stay tuned for that because as you guys know here in Canada, what happens in the United States, a lot of the time we tend to follow suit. And moving on to number two, that is the economic uncertainty. Uncertainty. Now here in Canada, we face many uncertainties in our economy, including inflation and potential recession concerns. And as you can imagine, if we continue with these economic conditions, it could affect job security as well as further hinder the housing market, potentially leading to lower home values as we continue on. Now, moving on to number three con is market correction. Now, this is a huge fear for many people. Buying a house in today's market at X and then further down the road, the house is starting to drop in value or potentially drop in value. That is a valid concern. Now, rewinding a couple of years ago, this was obviously where people became programmed thinking that no matter what, the market was always gonna continually to go up. And that is far from the truth. Now, like any type of market, the real estate market will always fluctuate up and down. However, in the long run is what you really need to look at. All right, now to quote a chart here, I'm gonna pull up some Niagara region stats. Uh, guys, this is average sale prices that are dating back to 2021. I wanna to touch on and show you guys how our prices can retract. Currently here in the Niagara region, our prices are back to around the 2020, late 2020, early 2021 levels. And I just wanna show you that. Now, as you can see from the chart right now, when recording this, we have July's data. Now, July's data is showing in Niagara an average house price of around $726,000. Now, if you look back on this chart, the last time we saw that kind of pricing was hovering, we saw a little bit, 740,000 in June of 2022. But if you go back even further, you'll see that the data goes back to October, 2021. Again, further reiterating what I'm talking about, how pricing can definitely retract in any real estate market. Now, an important factor to really consider here in Canada in comparison to our brothers in the United States. Now, the Canadian banking system and mortgage policies here in Canada are generally considered to be much more stable than the United States. Now, this is a good thing with Canadian conservative banking practices here in Canada. Canadian banks tend to have more conservative lending practices compared to our US counterparts. This includes more thorough credit assessments and lower risk tolerance. Now these factors have helped Canada avoid some of the most financial 
instabilities that affected the USA in the past. Now, moving on to number four con, that is affordability challenges. Now, as you already know, even in a buyer's market that we're in right now with prices being lower than what they were over the past couple of years, it's a valid concern that owning a home is an expensive proposition from high property taxes to high utility costs, as well as the expensive maintenance costs that come along with owning a piece of real estate. Now, there's always that ongoing debate, what's better, buying a house or renting a house? Now, the reality of it is right now, if you really look at the numbers, Numbers, a lot of people are debating the fact that actually renting is going to be a much better option for many, many people. Now, this isn't for everybody. However, this is an ongoing debate that's happening right now. Now, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with making a decision to get into the real estate market at this point in time. But my biggest piece of advice is make sure you align yourself with the right professionals like a mortgage broker and a real estate agent who's going to help you through the current state of what's happening in our market. Being financial financially prepared or financially ready is an extremely important element. Now the number five con, and this affects different areas throughout Canada, and that is regional variability. Now, what do we mean by this? The Canadian real estate market will vary significantly depending on the geographic location that you're in. For example, what's happening in Calgary might be completely different than what's happening in Saskatchewan or Newfoundland or the province of Ontario. And I know from personal experience that we're consistently seeing microclimate activity within our own marketplace with some neighborhoods selling faster than other and some neighborhoods appreciating in value better than others. I mean, this is just the reality of the real estate market. Now, if you guys are interested in staying up to date on what's happening here in the Niagara real estate market, make sure you guys sign up for my monthly newsletter. You can do that in the description below as well. If you're enjoying this video and want to learn more, then make sure you guys like and subscribe and tap that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post up similar videos just like this one. Now, moving on to pros or the advantage of buying a house in this state of the market in 2024. Now, firstly, I think it's important to understand and define what type of market we're actually in right now. And you heard me probably say it earlier on in this video, we are in officially a buyer's market. Now, what does that mean to you? Now, a buyer's market essentially means that there is too much inventory and not as many sales for the amount of buyers that are in the market at any given time. Now, picture this analogy to make it simple. You walk into a restaurant with a group of five people. It's a buffet and you sit down at the buffet and they just keep bringing food out, keep bringing food out. You're too full to eat more food, but they keep bringing more food out. Now, one of the most important statistics or elements that we look at here when we help buyers assess or even sell sellers assess what's happening in our market is the amount of month's supply of inventory or listings that are available on the market at any given time. Now I want to review with you a current chart that shows the month's supply of inventory right here in the Niagara region. Now, as you can see from this chart, this chart dates back to 2011. Now you can see the projection of this chart right now we're at July with July stats, we have 5.9 a month supply of inventory. Now, what this means is if we stop selling homes today, it would take 5.9 months to sell off all of the inventory that we have on the market. Now, this isn't super high. I would say this is relatively conservative, but if you go back and look, the last time we saw this amount of inventory was back in May of 2013, which showing around 6.2 April 2013, around six months supply of inventory. Now, again, this is for all 12 municipalities here in the Niagara region. If you're interested in seeing more or want to see a specific area like Niagara Lakes and Catharines, Thorold, or whichever municipality, make sure you send us a message, we'd be happy to provide that data for you. Now, the first pro or benefit of buying in a market that we're in right now is that we have high inventory levels. This is pretty obvious and I just touched on that. Now here in Niagara, we hit a record over the past 60 days with over 3000 properties listed on the market. Now this sets an all time record here in the Niagara region as we've never had this many listings on the market. And this is going back as far as the data that we could reach from our local board. Now as a buyer, obviously the huge benefit to more inventory is you're going to have a lot more choice. You're going to have less pressure. You have more negotiation power. 
and in theory, you should have better prices. Now, this isn't always the case. As I previously mentioned, there are micro climate markets or micro activity that does happen in various areas. But overall, in theory, you should have better prices when you are out there shopping. Now I will reiterate with caution that this will not last forever. We know this will not last forever. Obviously nobody has a crystal ball and nobody can time the market properly. However, we are in a great state of the market right now for buyers. So if you are on the sideline and you're thinking about dipping your toes in, I would highly recommend you take advantage of what's going on out there. And the number two pro is that you could actually have conditions in your offer. Now rewind two to three years ago, conditions in an offer would have set you back exponentially. We are writing offers unconditional almost 100% of the time to give our buyers a better chance to win the deal. Now the reality of it is right now in a buyer's market, you have more leverage, meaning that you can add any type of condition that you need in the offer. The typical popular ones are going to be your finance, your inspection, and even sale of property conditions. Now, just to quote what's happening here in the Niagara region right now, the ongoing staff for the past three months, most conditional sales that are sold, 48% of them actually are sold with sale of property conditions. Now, what does this mean? This means that people are being much more cautious going into the market having the ability to add that sale of property condition in there before they actually firm up and buy that new house. By taking on that risk in a market like this is extremely, extremely risky and definitely something I would advise against. Now I wanna remind you, obviously conditions in an offer are in benefit to any buyer. However, I do want to highlight that there is a benefit to sellers in this market too. As much as a home seller would love an unconditional offer, the reality of it is conditions in a buyer's offer is not a bad thing for you. If a buyer adds a condition, it means they're just doing their own due diligence, making sure they are 100% ready and approved to buy that house. Sure, there are scenarios where buyers may take advantage of a condition for negotiation power or perhaps a way to get out of a deal, but I know from my personal experience and the folks that I work with as buyers, it's just prepared them mentally, financially, just made them ready to move forward when ready to firm up on their deal. Hence, making it much better for a seller. If a seller is able to sit back for that week, week and a half during the time of the conditional period, if they're able to kind of take on that stress, at the end of the day, it's a much better scenario for both buyers and sellers. And moving on to number three pro, and I've kind of touched on this and it's kind of incorporated into the other ones is that you're gonna have more negotiation power. Now, longer days on market with property listings sitting closer to 60, 70, 90 to 120 days, that equates to more negotiation power for any buyer out there. Now I'm going to pull up a chart here. This is a Niagara chart, again, MLS data that shows the percentage of original list price versus what the property actually sold for. So as you can see, I've got the chart pulled up here. This is the average percent of last original list price. This is the percentage of what people are actually buying these houses for. Now you can see most current July data here. The average in Niagara is 95.8%. So people are getting deals they're negotiating prices. Now, if you go back, you can see it's been relatively consistent, kind of hovering just under that 96 percentile range. Now you can see back this big peak right here from 2022 to 2021. Obviously that's when things went crazy. You're seeing properties being sold for 113 to 115% over asking price. This was the norm in that market. Now you can see as well, going back again, this chart goes to 2011, you'll see that things were relatively consistent in the past before we had that crazy boom where most of the time buyers did have leverage and some negotiating power and sellers weren't selling for 100% asking. It was pretty normal to be able to buy a house anywhere around 95 to 96% of the asking price. And number four, we've just talked on this. This is better prices. Guys, the reality of it is in this market is that there's going to be different motivations for home sellers. Home sellers that are selling in a market like this are typically motivated for a reason, meaning that some people may be more motivated than others. There are power of sales, which means you may be able to get a better deal on a power of sale. There are people relocating that perhaps have purchased outside of the province or outside of Canada that, that need to move and need to sell. 
Regardless, there's a list of reasons why people are selling in the state of the market right now, and that does equate to better prices and, like I said, more negotiating power for buyers. Now, here in the Niagara real estate market, I can vouch for this. There's a lot of great deals right now, and I just want to talk about one market particularly, and that is Niagara on the Lake. Now, Niagara on the Lake has seen a record number of inventory or new listings hit the market. Maybe not out of the norm, given the fact that they're the most expensive market here in the Niagara region. Now, we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but really, I just wanna show you, you could see the list of properties that are available now in Niagara on the Lake, sub $1 million. The list is extensive. And I could tell you that rewinding three, four, five, six years ago, it wasn't, common to see this amount of inventory in this same price range. So if you're interested in buying a higher end or luxury property or even something that has a rural element and you want to be in the Niagara on the Lake postal code, then it's a fantastic time to really zero in on that market. Now, as you can imagine, there are a lot of things to consider right now, whether you're a buyer or a seller. And not one scenario is the same as someone else's scenario. Now, my advice is be as prepared as possible get the proper advice and make sure you are ready and anticipate all the additional costs that come along with home ownership in a market where we have higher interest rates. Remember, timing the market is merely impossible and real estate in the long run will always go up. We appreciate you watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you check out my most recent video, five reasons why people are leaving Toronto. Thanks for watching and we'll see all of you around town.